Hi, today I want to continue my discussions about how to write embedded software for the Wisnet W7500 microcontroller. So in my last video, I've showed you how to compile or how to create a small project structure for the W7500 from the files which were provided by Wisnet. And I've put them into this nice project structure here. But for compiling the application, I've used one long complicated um, GNU compiler command. And today I want to automate this build with a make file. So once again, here you can see my project structure. So all the files I got from Wisnet, I've put into this Wisnet folder. And for all projects I will create, I will create an own project folder. So here for this hello project, we have only a main.c file. This is the alpha we have compiled up here. These are all the um, these are all the files I got from Wisnet. So the first thing I will do is I will delete this hello.elf file and I will jump into my hello folder. And I will take this very long, long compiler command and echo it into a make file. But before we start, maybe let's talk about why it is useful to use make files. So you can see here, this command takes um, three, four different source files and it compile all these source files into one single elf file here. But it's a little bit, or it's more efficient to first compile all the um, source files into object files and then in the last step only link the object files because some files we will basically never touch, for example, the files which were provided by Wisnet. And here with this command, we have to compile these files every time we want to build our project. But when we have a make file, the make file checks which files have changed and it will only compile the files which were changed. And this makes the compilation process more faster and more efficient. Another cool thing about make files is we can create targets and one target could be to clean up all the built files, for example. But we will get into this just in a minute. Okay, so let me open up the make file. And one important thing to notice is, so when I'm running the make file, I'm running it in my current folder, which is hello. But here I run this compile command from the Wisnet examples folder. So maybe the first thing I will do is I will search for the term Wisnet and I will substitute it with one folder up and then with net. Okay, so now the paths should match. So basically, a uh, elf file consists of targets. The first target is the so-called default target, which, and if I just type make, only the default target will be called. And a makefile can have dependencies. Dependencies could be files or other targets. And these dependencies I can list here. So now I have built a simple makefile which just con or which just um, yeah has one target and then it specifies the compile command. If I run make, I'm almost able to build it, but of course I have to change the path for my main file and then I should be able to compile it. So this is a little bit more convenient. We don't have to remember the whole command, but still we are compiling all the source files into one elf file, and this can be done better. And another thing which is also not so flexible is the selection of our compiler tool chain. So maybe start with this here. So I will declare a variable here, I will call cross compile, and then I will set this variable to Um, the toolchain I'm using. So for example, if I'm using a different GNU compiler, in a different folder, I just have to change this variable up here and it will use a different toolchain, which is quite convenient. And then I will define the tools of my toolchain. So as a C compiler, I will use the ARM non-EAB GCC. So to 
reference a variable, I have to write a dollar sign, open a brace, write the name of the variable in a closer brace, and then this will be substituted by arm non e up in this example. Then I will need a compiler for my assembler sources. We will need a linker, but for a linker I will also need, I will use the GCC compiler frontend, and I will need object copy to turn my ELF file into a binary file. Yes. Okay. Cool. So now I have set up my toolchain. Ah, by the way, I can also create comments here to make it a little bit more clear by using the hash. So hash um, setup toolchain makes it maybe a little bit more readable. Um, then the next thing I will do is I will create some variables which will contain my source files. And I will split this into two variables. So a source variable which will only contain my C sources and an assembler source variable which will only contain my assembler sources. Okay, so here this is the only assembler source I have. And then I have three different um, C source files. Okay, if this line is too big for or too long for me, I can split it with backslashes into here, like this. Okay. And in the first step, I want to convert my source files into object files. So for doing so, what I can do is I can take the name of my of, or all the files here in the source variable and I want to substitute um, .c with .o. And of course I will do the same for my assembler source, but here I will um, substitute .s with a .o. Okay, and then I need my include paths, which I will save in this include variable here. So I have two includes. And I will also say, let's maybe break them into two lines to make it a little bit more easy to read. Then I will define my um, C flags. Here I will use... So once again, the C flags which we pass in here is a minus G for compiling the code to an ELF file with debug symbols. Minus O3 is the optimization of the code which should be used. Mfump is the instruction set I want to use, and mcpu is the type of CPU I want to use. And I will also add my include paths to this variable. And then I need a second variable I will call um, D flag, ld flags for my linker. And in here I will pass my linker script and this no standard lib. Um, yeah, no standard lib flag, which tells us we want to compile this without a standard lib. Okay, so here, the first um, thing here is the default target, and then I can pass in the dependencies. I will add one more variable, which will give me the name of my project, which is hello. And here I'm saying the dependency of the all target is the name.bin, so hello.bin file. Okay, but now we need a target to create this file. So let's create this target. The dependency for creating hello.bin is hello.elf and the way we are um, creating this file is by using object copy. The output format should be a binary. And this here will be substituted with the first dependency of my um, target and this $add will be substituted by the name of the target. So yeah, here I'm creating hello.bin from hello.elf. Now, of course, we also need a target to create hello.elf. Um, and the dependencies here are the object files we have. And here I will use my linker. I will pass in the linker flags. Then my... This here will be substituted with all dependencies of this target. And this, once again, is the name of my target. 
Okay, now I need targets for creating my object files. And here will, I will use a, yeah, this generic one. So here I'm telling it for the object files, please use the C files. And for the C files, call the C compiler. We will give it the minus C flag to tell the C compiler, please compile these files into object files without linking them. Then we pass our C flags. Once again, um, this here is my first um, dependency and the output should be the name of the target. And for the um, assembler sources, I will do something quite similar. The only difference is here, here are the dependencies are all um, point .c files. Okay, and then I will be able to build everything, but I will add one more target, a clean target to remove all the files I have built automatically. And therefore, I will call, so this variable is already predefined and behind this variable in Linux, you can find the rm-f command. And I want to delete name.bin, name.elf and all my object files. Okay, and this should be basically a simple make file for building our W7500 project. So let me try it if it's working. So I will call make again. And now you see the first thing it does, it, it's, it's taking the um, C files and compiles them into object files. Then it's also taking the um, assembler files and compiling them into an object file. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, the assembler doesn't have an optimization level. Then let's use the regular GNU C compiler front end for it. Now it's working. So now I can also compile the um, the assembler file into an object file with the same C flags. Down here I'm linking everything and down here I'm executing the object copy and you can see now here we have our automatically built files. And the cool thing is if I open up main.c again and if I change something here, never mind what it is. Now if I run make again, it will only compile the files which have changed and all the um, targets which depends on the file which have changed. So this makes it quite comfortable to compile everything. When I'm calling make clean, I'm cleaning all the automatically generated files and with and I can also specify a target, another target here. So for example, if I only want to build the elf file but not the bin file, I can run the target hello.elf here and this will only build until the target hello.elf. And in theory, but this I think I won't show you because it may, it will not work. But in case I have a, another compiler, I can also take this cross compile variable here and set it here to something different, maybe an empty string, then it would use the normal x86 compiler. But of course you were getting an error because for this compiler, this mCPU option is not used and it also doesn't know the thump instruction set. So yeah, this makes not so much sense, but it's possible to do it. And if I would have another ARM GCC compiler, it could be useful. Okay, cool. So that's how to automate um, the build of our first W7500 project with a make file. In the next example or in the next video, I will show you how to debug and load this example on my Surf 5 evaluation board. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buy me a coffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.